Hey guys, Marty Golden out at Fly Creek Kennels. Today's video is going to focus on all the items that I think are necessary to train your own personal gun dog. I'm not going to go over each one of these in detail today. I'm going to do individual videos on how I use these items when I'm training. So don't forget, like and subscribe, hit that notification bell, so that way when I do those series and those videos, you guys can see them as soon as they come out. What I'm going to start with today is your simple standard tools that every dog owner should have. One is a six foot, and in my case, I love leather leashes. Okay, Leather just feels so good in the hands once it starts to age and it starts to get broken down, and it's just really comfortable to work with. The other thing that's really important is to have some sort of training collar, whether it is a slip chain, choke chain, whatever you'd like to call it, or in many cases with a lot of dogs I work with, a pinch collar, okay, prong collar. Another really important tool for transitional work is a tab leash. Tab leash is about the width of your hand, about six inches. And I use that in a lot of cases when I'm going from field work to transitional work. Okay. The other thing that's really important that every dog trainer, or gun dog trainer at least, should have is a variety of different bumpers. And I'm really looking forward to doing that video to talk about the individual bumpers and how I use them in the different uh, phases of training with my dogs. A bumper launcher. You know, a lot of you folks are training by yourself. You don't have the option to work with someone else. And so there's a lot of great ways that you can use a bumper launcher when you're working on your own and training on your own with your dog. And of course, with all of this, you want to make sure that you're using some sort of ear protection. And, you know, look, you guys know that you can buy really cheap ear protection and you can buy really expensive ear protection, but buy something that's going to hold up and it's not going to fall apart. Also believe it's very important that you guys have a quality electronic collar that you can use with your dogs. All of the training that you're gonna see in my videos, the dogs are using electronic collars. I'm using electronic collars with them and they're properly trained to them and can be a very effective and beneficial, beneficial tool to communicating with your dog at a distance. In the leash category, I forgot the inevitable check cord long leash, however you want to refer to it. I'm a huge fan of check cords and long leashes for inexperienced dogs. I won't say young dogs, inexperienced dogs. I've used them a lot on older dogs as well. Another real basic training tool that we tend to forget about is a solid, dependable food pouch. Okay, I do use food in a lot of my training in the beginning stages and I want something that's going to hold the food and not fall apart on me. And then for those dog owners that forget these often, poop bags. <laughs> Make sure when you're out training, especially if you're on public ground, that you have your poop bags with you guys. I mean that's the number one reason people hate people having their dogs off leash and running around is because poop everywhere and nobody picks up after them. Also really important to make sure you're using some sort of shotgun in your training. In this case, single shot, it is unloaded, it is safe. Single shot 12 gauge shotgun. A lot of times I will also use a pump 12 gauge shotgun. So whatever you have, um, certainly don't want you to go out and have to buy something. Um, but use what you've got. We're gonna really need that, again, during the transitional stage of training so the dogs get used to what it looks like training around a gun. In that gun, I'm using blanks, okay? Field blanks, as they call them. Kent makes a good brand. Uh, I just think they're a much safer option than using live rounds, and man, they give a heck of a bang. Very realistic uh, when it comes to training. A couple of other things here that you might see that are maybe a little confusing. You're not real sure why I have them on the table, but decoys. Used decoys. You don't need anything fancy for training your dog, but your dog needs to get familiar with training around decoys. So just a big fan of having at least 
a half a dozen to a dozen decoys that you guys can use in your water work. Even over here, you can see that I've got some goose silhouettes that I use when I'm training goose field hunting scenarios. I really like silhouettes out in the field when I'm training because they're just lightweight. They're easy to move around, set up, break down, and they do just a good a job at getting the dogs used to um, having decoys in the spread as a full body shell. Also using some sort of elevated platform, a lot of times for the place command, you can use it in handling work as well. I do have a video that shows you guys how to make your own. In this case, this is a little bit fancier. It's an aluminum um, elevated dog bed that I have a rubber mat on. Use this a lot when I'm training my client's dog. So I've got a pretty good quality one that's, that holds up over time. I've also been through a couple of mutt huts over the years, dog blinds. My dogs and my client's dogs all run out of dog blinds at some point. So it's important to be able to train out of them. Have that in your repertoire as well. It doesn't have to be anything really great. As a matter of fact, you're going to be beating it up a lot. So if you've got an old one or one that you haven't used in a while, that's probably the one I would recommend for dog training. Over here you can see this is my white marker that I use for young dogs and um, transitioning from pattern blinds to cold blinds for um, handling work. So having something like this is also very beneficial to uh, your toolbox. One of the other things we don't talk a lot about is finding good help, finding a good partner to train with. And a lot of times it's easy if you can find someone else that's also trying to train their gun dog to kind of incorporate them into your schedule and see if maybe you guys can scratch each other's backs. Go out, throw for her or him, and flip it around. Have that person throw for you. In that case, if you are finding help, it's important that you guys are having some sort of uh, coats to wear. It's very important with these young dogs to have some sort of jacket that they can see at a distance, whether it be white or whether it be black. Um, something that kind of stands out in, in my world, I, I personally wear the black coat often when I'm training and for young dogs I will have my bird person or my bird tech wearing the white in the beginning and then maybe even transition over to black eventually to camouflage. But these young dogs, they do need that help in being able to see what's going on at a distance. Along with having a good bird tech is being able to communicate with that person out in the field. So having a good set of two-way radios that you can use out in the field is just a really handy tool in order to communicate when that dog needs help. If that dog does not need help, it's a heck of a lot better than trying to yell sometimes at 100 to 150 yards out into a field on a windy day. So having good radios is well worth the effort. You know, it's also important to make sure that you guys have a really good quality starter pistol. There's a lot of situations where you're going to need a good pop for your dog to gain their attention or to continue that gun fire conditioning next to their side and working on your steadiness. So make sure you get a good quality starter pistol. And if you don't have a holster around the house that you can use, spend a little extra money and get yourself one. It's just a lot easier when you're starting to accumulate all of these tools to stay organized, and a holster is one way to do that. The duck call and your whistle are also an invaluable tool when you're training. The more your dog can get used to a duck call when you're training, the less excited they're gonna be about it when they're actually out hunting. So having a Decent duck call, it doesn't have to be anything fancy. You know, you're gonna wind up spending somewhere between 10 and 20 bucks on a duck call. Get it on a decent lanyard so you're not gonna lose it and put it with your whistle and just save this for your training gear. Look, if you've already got one that you hunt with, you can use that as well. I like to sometimes have something else along the side for what I do so I'm not using my good gear when I'm out training. So again, don't forget guys, Send me some comments. I might have missed something on this table that you use when you're training your gun dog that I didn't mention or bring up, and it would be great to know whether or not 
I missed on it. So anyway, again, once again, please like it, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and keep an eye out for the upcoming videos that's going to talk about each one of these tools that I have here on the table and how I use them when I'm training my clients' gun dogs. Until next time, go get your dog and go get some tools.